Okay, we are live on Facebook and recording here on Zoom. Thank you for joining us, everybody. This is Krista Gervon from Princeton Integrative Health, and I'm here with Dr. Vinny from Princeton Integrative Health as well. And this is kind of a combination of the Invincible Health Series with Dr. Vin, as well as our Lyme Disease Awareness Month Health Series. So we're combining the two to give you information today on how Lyme disease affects our brain and our cognitive health. So Dr. Vinny, would you like to give us a brief overview about how Lyme affects our brain and cognitive health, please? Sure. Um, so Lyme disease, um, as most people I think may know, um, it's caused by a spirochete um, called Borrelia um, that gets into our uh, system. Uh, most people know that it causes, uh, you know, if you catch it early, it might cause an erythema migraine rash, but many people don't have that. You know, numbers are between uh, 50 and 70 percent of people don't have the rash. Um, and, uh, but causes joint pains, causes uh, fever, chilled sweats, that kind of thing in the beginning. But not everybody has that. Um, but certainly if you have that, you would suspect Lyme. Usually in the early uh, stages, you know, the Lyme test will be negative. Mm -hmm. But then later on, if uh, Lyme is either uh, not treated adequately or is not diagnosed at all, um, the Lyme spirochete can get into our central nervous system. Wow. Um, and if it does that, I mean, some people will have what's called the Bell's palsy, where one side of their face will droop. Um, certainly then most people would know to suspect Lyme. But sometimes that particular um, complication does not happen, and people just end up with chronic Lyme. Um, you know, some people become severely ill with that and end up going to the hospital, get spinal taps and treated. But for other people, it can just uh, cause a um brain fog or anxiety or depression uh you know uh, chronic fatigue syndrome fibromyalgia all, all things which um even though most people don't think of them as involving the nervous system they often those chronic diseases the chronic fatigue the uh, fibromyalgia actually are diseases that involve the nervous system and for some people um lyme is one of the causes of alzheimer's dementia Wow. So that's something that uh, with our cognitive health program that, you know, we, we check people for yeah. uh, to make sure they do not have Lyme disease. Yeah. In our earlier uh, event with Jenna, you know, she talked about that, how so many people have this mi um, misconception about Lyme and how we detect it with the bullseye rash. And, and so many times it, it doesn't appear that way. So people go undiagnosed for so long. And, um, you know, to your point, over time, it can it can begin affecting our brain in that way. So I, I was even surprised to hear that because I always thought I always knew that you know you look for the bullseye and that's the telltale sign of Lyme. So it's mm -hmm. interesting to know that that's not always how it is. Yeah. 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 So you talked about how it can even cause Alzheimer's. Um, what does it do to the brain um, for the brain to begin um, cognitive decline? Well, like any infection, it's associated with inflammation. Mm -hmm. You know, it's associated with um, activation of the immune system. So the immune system is, you know, I was trying to keep it in check. Um, and, uh, you know, if it finds infected cells, sometimes it'll kill those cells. Uh, but the spirochetes are, are pretty effective at evading the immune system. But usually you know something is going on. So there'll be a kind of a low level inflammation going on all the time. And for some people, that's enough to tip them over. They might have other risk factors, you know, uh, you know, things like uh, maybe their blood supply to their brain is not that great, or maybe they have diabetes and have metabolic issues related to that. Yeah. So it might not be just one thing, yeah. but, um, you know, Lyme is certainly one of the ones that can do that. Um, you know, we're finding also, you know, just on that same topic of infections that call, can contribute to dementia, people with um, 
oral health problems. Certain uh, bacteria from the mouth have been found in the brain of Alzheimer's patients right. on autopsy, of course. Yeah. Um, and uh, so these chronic infections, we, you know, I was never taught that in medical school. You know, of course, that was a few years ago for me. Um, <laughs> and uh, that, you know, you could get these kind of chronic infections that cause it. But if we look more towards uh, like syphilis, mm -hmm. um, which is also caused by um, a spirochete. Okay. That can get into the brain in the central nervous system. There might not be any signs anyplace else, but over the course of decades, um, leads to uh, leads to a dementia also. So yeah. I think it's the same kind of model. Yeah, so if there's anyone watching um, and they are having and these experiencing chronic illness, uh, like you talked about, it would be something that they could come into our office and then we would be then begin to peel back the layers of the onion really because you said there could be other things going on so we really try to get to those root causes with the testing and then possibly a diagnosis if, if it's been untreated or been undiagnosed for for so long sure and since you mentioned that let me just mention a little bit about testing yeah testing for lyme disease is not great mm -hmm. you know um you know we Lyme disease is more of a clinical diagnosis with supportive testing, especially in the early stages, because when somebody has an erythema migraine rash, it's too early for the body to have mounted an adequate antibody response, so testing will be negative. Okay. Um, but even later on, um, if somebody's been sick with Lyme for a long time, their immune system may be kind of beaten down enough that it doesn't... Um, the antibody testing is still negative. And so it's not uncommon that people who might have what appear to be all the clinical symptoms of Lyme might have a negative test, but once you start to treat them right. and the immune system starts to recover, then all of a sudden they're positive. Oh, wow. So interesting. So, so yeah. yeah. So um, you have to be careful. You know, I have a lot of people come in and say, oh yeah, I had that, I had a negative Lyme test. And I'm like, yeah, but we'll see, you know, um, because there are other, there are, there, there are certain labs that are better at that kind of testing than other labs. Uh, yeah. um, so if somebody goes to lab core request and they have a positive Lyme test, we trust that. But if they have a negative Lyme test there, that's uh, something that's open to question and we will do further testing for them. Yeah, we touched on that a little bit too with our uh, my talk with Jenna, just how they're not very sensitive to it. So you may get a negative test, but like you said, you got to really dig in there and see what, what could be happening. Yep. Um, I'm going to go check on Facebook to see if we have any questions, but feel free to give any other information about Lyme, um, brain health, anything like that, and I will go see if we have any questions. Okay. No questions on Facebook, but if anyone on Zoom wants to put anything in the chat, we're here to um, answer any questions you might have. You can always call our office and schedule a discovery session. If you have lots of questions and you want to get them answered, the number to call is 609-512-1468, or you can email us at info at princetonih.com. Um, the discovery sessions are about 30 minutes long, so you get plenty of time to talk about any, any challenges you might be going through. Um, and the Lyme, the Lyme Disease Awareness Month Health Series, it's a mouthful, um, continues next week. Um, I'll be speaking with um, our acupuncturist, Joe Bonacci, about how functional medicine um, is a, how, how a functional medicine approach to treating Lyme um, can really help with the symptoms that you might be experiencing. So we'll be uh, talking on Wednesday, May 26th at 12 p.m. noon, and um, you can join us here on Zoom or on Facebook Live. But yeah, if there's any other um, information you wanted to share with anyone, please go ahead. Yeah, I mean, you know, Lyme affects all age groups. Mm -hmm. You know, our kids can have it, and 
studies show that, you know, 40% of them don't have an, a recognized erythema migraines rash. So you have to be careful of that. Make sure you're, you know, checking children for ticks. Make sure you're checking your pets for ticks um, because they can get Lyme or they can bring Lyme into you. Um, so, you know, it's very important to do that. Some people will have their yard sprayed. Um, to try to keep the ticks down, try to do that with as natural ingredients as you can, so you don't poison yourself while you're doing that. Yes. But, <laughs> um, but you know, for pets, you could put you know the uh, tick collars on them and that kind of thing, do the uh, tick treatments. Um, so that's another important uh, thing to do. You know, we have uh, we have kind of a natural essential oil spray that's uh, tick repellent. So if people wanted any of that, um, they're not just getting the uh, typical uh, chemicals that you can buy at the uh, pharmacies or uh, home goods stores and that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, and it's not just, of course it's not just Lyme, but there are other co-infections, things like Bartonella, mm -hmm. common co-infection that also affects the brain. Um, very commonly, maybe even more so than Lyme, causes uh, things like anxiety, depression, uh, personality changes, especially in children. So if there's anything like that going on, something that just seems so out of the ordinary for somebody, yeah. then I would say, you know, probably best to find a Lyme literate physician mm -hmm. and uh, have some testing done to see if that could be what's going on. Uh, Great, yeah. Did anyone have any questions on the Zoom here, Susan? Did you want? Did you have any questions? Hi. Um, well, it's not really a question, but <clears throat> I'm in England. <laughs> okay. As you probably know. Um, it's not really taken seriously here. Um, if you, I mean, I did go to the doctor a couple of years, a few years ago, just and said I thought you know I might have it and. You know, I was just treated like like a nutcase, basically. Mm. But there's no awareness of it in, in Britain. There is in Germany, and I'm not sure about other countries, but they're very aware of it in Germany, but not here. Mm. No. You know, in the United States, there is certainly a, a big divide in, in physicians who believe in Lyme, chronic Lyme, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. other doctors who say those things don't exist. So there's kind of mm -hmm. almost a raging debate in the medical community here. So yeah. people here in, in the States have to mm -hmm. find a doctor whose philosophy includes that. Otherwise, as you said, you kind of treat it like a nutcase and, uh, you know. Or a hypochondriac, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So how how'd you get hooked up with us uh, here w in this uh, program? I don't really, I don't really know. I'm not sure. <laughs> I, I think it came through on Eventbrite. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, good. It's uh, nice to hear. Nice to hear it's getting out <laughs> out there that way. So yeah. Oh, super. But um, I, mean, I don't know if you've been to any conferences in in England or in Europe. No, well, no, I haven't been. No, no. I mean. They probably don't have any because yeah. I, I mean they wouldn't have them here, but they might have them in in on, on, in mainland Europe. Yeah, as I, you know, as I as said, I, they definitely take it seriously. And I mean, I I I know people in Germany whose ch child, someone whose child got it. Um, mm -hmm. So you know, they they do. There's there's no awareness of it at all in in England, none whatsoever. Mm. Wow. Or the whole yeah. United Kingdom, you know. So. It's strange, isn't it? Does it cover, is it um, prevalent throughout the whole of the USA? Or is it more right. prevalent in certain states? Well, I think it's it spread all over the US now, but it's certainly more prevalent in some, you know, some states, uh, you know, mm. that whole, you know, the uh, Connecticut and, you know, the Northeast of the US certainly it's has a lot, good. but it's it's really been spreading everywhere now, yeah. so. Um, but yeah, I was going to say I went to an integrative uh, medical conference and there was a company from Germany that specialized in Lyme testing. So I'm not surprised mm, that, you know, yeah, that they, yeah. you know, I, that would indicate to me that somebody there in Germany was taking it pretty seriously. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, and yeah. I mean, if 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 you if in in the states you went, you were you were, were being um, you were presenting with dementia, or, or would you automatically be tested for Lyme? Depends on who you go to. Mm. Um, there's a physician who wrote a book called The End of Alzheimer's. His name is Dale Bredesen, MD, and he, um, he's been studying Alzheimer's for like 30, 20, 30 years now. And uh, he's actually put together a program where he uh, prevents and has said that in about 100 people, he has helped reverse cognitive decline, improving their cognitive scores on standardized testing and that kind of thing and in real life kind of ways. Um, and so he's, he teaches other physicians, certifies other physicians to do that. And part of his, uh, you know, philosophy is that um, you have to test people for Lyme. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, if you absolutely. don't have other explanations and they're not getting better with the, you know, you know, I think I mentioned some of the things, if they have diabetes and you treat their diabetes and that's getting better, but they're not getting better, then you still better start looking at things like Lyme disease and maybe heavy metal toxins and that kind of thing. So, um, but there aren't many physicians that are doing that in the U.S. You know, we're a very yeah. small So you're, um, you're, I mean, you're integrative, right. health. Mm -hmm. Um, and so you're not mainstream, I guess. You could I mean, write, I am, you know, mm -hmm. I, I was for 32 years, I was doing com conventional mainstream medicine, both I've worked in an ER and then family medicine, which is where my mm -hmm. training is. And then I have branched out into, yeah, more of the, um, looking deeper for the root causes of, of, of illnesses and mm -hmm. using more, uh, holistic means, you know, I'll use conventional yeah. antibiotics and whatever when I need to, but yes. much more nowadays, uh, looking to uh, botanical gerbils, that kind of thing to help people. And those things are also effective for Lyme. Um, you know, there are botanicals that we use for that. I use some antibiotics for people, but also I try to get them onto botanicals as quickly as possible. Too. That's really interesting. I, um, I, I, I I um I mean we used to call it alternative medicine here and now we call we'll it still call that here yeah <laughs> but we, now we, we we do call it integrative medicine now and yeah, uh, good I I'm, I live in Bristol and there's this place called the National Centre for Integrative Medicine here mm. which, which I'm a mem I, I'm sort of a member I, I go on their webinars and things um, but um, you, you know we have the National Health Service sure um, it. We used to have a home, we had a homeopathic hospital here in Bristol on the wow. National Health Service. Wow, that's great. Um, I mean, they, they, the, the hospital was kind of taken away and they had a little sort of hut at the side. And then, then the university took over the hospital, which was a beautiful building, is a beautiful building for their student health centre. Mm. And, and then about two or three years ago, the, the NHS just withdrew the funding, wow. oh, and that's when the when the National Centre for Integrative Medicine was set up. Um, but it's but you have to. Pay, I mean, we're not used to paying, you know. But you have to pay for for, for now for integrative medicine, mm. um, and that's what when I said you know it's not taken seriously. I mean, if you go to a a general practitioner, sure, an NHS GP. You know, you 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 won't really get very far. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's the same here. That that's the same in the states. You have to find yeah, some type of. That's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But it, but oh. it's um, it's it's uh yeah it's great that we I mean I I you know it's great that we've got the National Center for Integrative Medicine here. Yeah, that is um, wonderful. It, but it, it because of they took away the NHS funding, it's it's actually quite expensive. So. Sure. Well, same but, thing happens uh, here. You know, we're on, an, you know, most of the U.S. is on an insurance model, but we yes, found yes. that we could not, in integrative medicine, we, find, we found we could not survive within that model. So we are no. outside of it. I understand that totally, yes. Yeah. So. Well, it's uh, very nice to have. Nice to meet you, Susan Milestone. Very nice.
Make nice of you. <laughs> and um, we always do these types of events, so you can continue to check back on Eventbrite and uh, join us for future. Um, I will. Yeah. Like this. So we cover all types of different topics, so we welcome yeah. you to uh, tell your friends as well. I will. I've got a friend who who's definitely interested in Lyme disease, so I'll try okay. and get. Her. <laughs> yeah. We'll have one more thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's been okay. great. Okay. You take care. Bye. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Hi. Well, that was a great uh, yeah. chat. Thank you so much, Dr. Vinny, for all that great information. And thank you, Susan, for joining us. And thank you, everyone else, for watching. And we will see you next week, um, same time, 4.30. And again, I'll be with Joe Bonacci on Wednesday at noon on um, May 26th, talking Lyme again. So thanks again, everyone. Have a great night. Bye, Krista. Bye, Dr. Vinny. <laughs>